mentioned the photographer Daniel Wollheim. Yes. Uh, he was awarded with a Guldrute for his work on a drama series uh, while he was working on, on this project. Yes. Uh, and uh, you might say he had some challenges there uh, with, the, with the stormy, windy weather. It was like white and no sight outside and very dark uh, and small spaces inside. How did you work on the photo together? Um, quite well, I think. Um, <laughs> Um, no, we had a we had a plan on how how the, the style should be of the movie, and it, it's uh, the, th the three weeks up at Grotti was just the improvisation. Uh, the, um, the weather changes several times. Changes all today. the time, so we had uh, we had you know four schedules for each day depending on the weather, so we're constantly changing. Uh, and the and the German uh, co costume designers and, and production designers who are very accurate about everything and want every wants everything to be repaired, uh, be well prepared. They're not very good. In improvisation, but uh, they were excellent uh, <laughs> at their job. So, uh, so it was just, and we were setting up for. Okay, we do a good weather scene. Binne Tourism, the first AD who is here, she knows all about it. Hi, hi Binne. Mm -hmm. say um, and so we had actually four schedules almost for each day, so depending on the weather and the weather forecast. The uh, was, um, yeah, <laughs> sponsored by us, uh, and uh, <laughs> and. Um, and then we was set up the camera for for uh, for bad weather scenes. Put the wind machines in the right direction, and and the smoke machines and snow machines and everything. And then the sun came out. And then we had, then you had to wait, look at the clock, and say, shall we wait for bad weather again? They're calling uh, Meteorologisk Institute and everything. So it was uh, constant improvisation. But I I, I, I like that. It was uh, I was quite desperate at times. I must admit, and I was okay. This will never work. But uh, you never showed it. No. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. <laughs> But then you went on to more controlled atmosphere. You went to Trollhetta, Trollhetta yeah. or yeah. Trollywood, as we also call it. Uh, but there, uh, you were in a studio, normal circumstances, but still, you chose to do it in a freezer? It's in a freezer, yes. It's the most horrible so place. So, still uncomfortable for you guys? Again, freezing, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, we were wearing these, uh, these outfits. I mean, we were talking about the costumes today. It was extraordinary. Uh, hats off to the costumes department. Excuse the joke. Um, <laughs> they... Yeah. Um, we wore several layers, I think we wore about five or six layers at any one moment, and these suits that made us look like, do you guys know what Michelin men are, you know, the Michelin men? <laughs> and, um, Teletubbies? Tele Teletubbies, that's <laughs> what they were, they were Teletubbies. Um, it was freezing, yeah. We had, a, we, had, we had our problems with that too every now and then, like they, the freezer stopped working, so it's actually quite warm. Uh, and they're supposed to be cold, but these, uh, they were like 20 kilos or so, they're extremely warm. Yeah. So they, have to, the, the, they were sweating all the time, so trying to make them feel cold was... Drinking Difficult. hot water, I remember, at some yeah. point, just trying to get the breath. Yeah. Hmm. And then uh, let's return to the cabin in the fiction. Uh, because before the lovely uh, little ski trip we see, there has been something in between, mm. which is, of course, alcohol. Uh, and we can there, there is a study of uh, the effects of alcohol on male emotion. And especially your character, Stig Henrik, uh, opens himself and shows uh, his statistic side and other things. Um, what can you tell us about the, the relationship that he... I can tell developed? you this, that we were, we were uh, trying to get the bottles, Akivit Frosker, from 1940s. And what happens was that Eduardo, he's here somewhere, and he uh, phoned up, there he is. He phones up these guys in uh, Linne Akivit and uh, tries to get the empties just so we could uh, mm -hmm. refill them with tea. And all of a sudden, we have a full box of real Akevit from 1940. <laughs> 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 so we had a good ball on that one, but that was not one we were shooting. So uh, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> About the relationship we see evolving. It's, it's hardly what you, what you think yeah, at the start. I can't, start I when can't you tell these people that we're having sex because that would be stupid. <laughs> That's Smithy it's and it's I broke back uh, mountain for uh, five uh, people. <laughs> I, I mean, when uh, <laughs> it, yeah, if Smithy knows this, then he'll get very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you've compared this to your own uh, cabin trips, uh, Petrnes, when you were spoken to the press earlier, oh. and uh, we just have to introduce our foreign guest for the concept of hittetur, which is going up to a cabin, very narrow place. You're supposed to recreate outdoors. You end up drinking alcohol and quarreling with your friends indoors. Yeah. Disgraceful. And you say that this is actually this phenomenon in reverse. Yeah, actually. So I, I think I have to say it in Norwegian because I don't know how to say it in English. It's I can translate. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's um, there are a um, uh, history of five men on a hyttetur who try to be friends. 
Og det er det absurde fenomenet at de, de skal overleve sammen for att komme tillbaka til krigen og fortsätta å slåss mot hverandre. Gradvis så, er, så blir antagonisten et gryende vänskap. Og det er jo litt uvanlig. Et vennskap som de må försöka och undertrykke. Men og det, det er, synes jeg, et fantastisk deilig og absurd premiss som gör att det också är er, kanske inmellan överraskande mycket humor i den filmen för det man <laughs> It's all about timing isn't it? <laughs> så <laughs> mm. Oh sorry I forgot are you still here? Ja uh, no, no, fine. <laughs> but it is also let's underline that is also a very serious film. It is. And uh, there is a social hierarchy that develops. And I'm no expert on military ranks, but you can see quite clearly that uh, the ones on the same level communicate and confront each other. Yeah. Uh, and you must have been working a lot yeah. with that on the script stage and onwards. Yes, indeed. And I wanted to, to turn them into some kind of family where, where, where the, 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 the guys who are not uh, officers, the privates, they, they become kind of the children and uh, and uh, the two the officers they become mother and father the, and one has a feminine side and one more masculine side and discussing how to do the dishes and how to how to deal with the life inside the cabin so it it narrows down down to some kind of universal uh, recognizable family life uh, where where people argue about silly matters all the time mm-hmm. so um it's uh, it's 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 two empires who meet as one trying to get up the German uh, Empire tried to, to conquer the world, and the British Empire is sort of, sorry to say, on its way down. Yeah, on its way down, but yeah. it was. It was <laughs> now, now it's it all the way down, isn't it? But, but still uh, keeping up appearances, yeah. top, I must say. Yes, yeah, it's, and it's trying also, to, yeah. uh, I must say, uh, when we are introduced to your two characters, uh, the first time we meet you, Stig Henrikov, uh, the plane has just crashed, and you are barking to your subordinate that this flesh wound in your elbow, it's only in your elbow. And then the first time we meet uh, Lachlan Nibor's character, you have you hear this very soft, thin voice in the <laughs> snowstorm saying, "I beg your pardon." <laughs> and, and at this point, especially, your film is is very essentialistic when it comes to uh, depicting national character. Yeah. And and you are like the perfect Brit. How did you go about to do that in a not too <laughs> arrogant not way? Sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, how, that's how Yes, yes, yes. Thanks. Thank you very much. Mm. Nod and smile. Um, mm. And when you do that, it, it can't come off as too arrogant and too par- parodic in a way. Okay, well, here's the, here's the one bloke. I haven't ever told you this, and I haven't told anyone this. Um, but the one bloke who kept coming to mind when I was you know, rehearsing, when we were thinking about it, when we were acting it, when we were doing it, well, the one bloke that sat right in front of my mind was my tutor from Oxford University, mm-hmm. who, um, I'm not going to name him, but he just had that touch of... Uh, just superiority, um, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't. It just wasn't. It wasn't contestable. You know, he he he, he was. Uh, he's obviously a very bright man. Um, he got to think through a lot of things, uh, and he wasn't arrogant. But you know, t- it depends who he's talking to. A lot of people could see that he was arrogant if they didn't quite match it. I don't understand. I don't really know how to explain it. But he was the one who, um, whenever I was a bit lost, which was quite a lot, but I just, you know, I, I just sort of thought, well, uh, this is what he was like. He used to sit there jangling his keys in the tutorials and just talk to you for an hour. And um, I never understood a word he was saying. <laughs> but I sort of was like, yeah, very good. Very. And if one thing I did learn from him, it was how to play a part like him. <laughs> so. <laughs> so now we have uh, the social background of Captain Davenport. Uh, we, we know a bit about that now. It's upper class. Similar. But the whole uh, you have the social background is very important for each and every character. Yeah. Can you develop a bit on that? Yeah, I think uh, they're, they're there for the various reasons. Uh, the, the, the part that Rupert Green plays, he's a, he, uh, he's a streetwise, very fiery guy. He's a, he's a, he's a champion uh, in, in, in Dart, in the pub, and he's pissed by being there because he has a date with Sheila, the bartender, who beats him in a dart. She's even better than him. So that night, when they were shot down the first night in the cabin, he should have been back at the airbase and, and met her. Hmm. So, so, it's, so it's all about that. It's, it's all about human beings that I, 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 I met the love of my life and then you shot us down. Um, and he's, he's streetwise, he just speaks his mind. He, he, he don't care, he's, he's like, 
using the, the, the Mein Kampf as a toilet paper, he just does that to provoke them. I say, come on, are you going to shoot me? Shoot me, fine. And, uh, and then, um, of course, we have him, and then we have Schopitz, the, very, the German guy who wants to do everything right. Uh, and as I, t as I told you earlier, that he, I met him and he said that he was disappointed with himself that he, he, that he didn't manage to do the, the, the mission. He crash-landed. And I said, oh, you must have been happy uh, that you survived. No, I was, I was disappointed with myself when my men died and, and everything. And then uh, Stieg Hendrik, who is, uh, plays this guy Strunk, the big silent guy who is... Uh, is it's written in the script that I'm a giant. <laughs> and that I don't get exhausted and I had just to get rid of these things because uh, I had to talk to Peter and say Peter, I'm just a normal guy you know, I, I'm, I, I can't fulfill this giant <laughs> that you got in the script <laughs> we take the camera down yeah. a little bit I mean come on man, I, I need to be exhausted <laughs> <laughs> no but and, and he's the person who he has, uh, he has to take over the family business, 2,000 workers and he hates it so he volunteered for the army, for the Luftwaffe and then he ended up here, and he kind of likes it. It's a, he's an artist at art. He wants to, to, to draw and make paintings. And he can just sit there and observe and, say, and look at all these conflicts going on. And then gradually he comes to life, and he reveals himself. And he, this strange relationship between him and, and this fiery Rupert Grint uh, evolves. And it's uh, two, two nice people. There. As, as, as I say, I, we have to go. I'm beginning to like you. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, I think it's very human. Uh, it's a very human story. It's all about men who meet, and I think that uh, it's, it's universal, and it's, it's very, it happens all the time. If you put enemies together and they can spend some time together, they will learn that they, they, are, uh, they, they, they are human beings and they, they want to be loved, they want to, be, to, to love someone, they want to mean something for other people, and, uh, and uh, they want to develop as human beings instead of just sitting there like... This this uh, first World War movie Noel, uh, the Christmas in Hell, it's called. They they come up from their shelters and they they meet and they have a party. Yeah, they exchange Christmas gifts. Yes, they yes. play soccer. So it's, yeah. Between the trenches, and yes. this is it's uh, easy to think about that when. Uh, yeah, when it's it's a similar process workers. actually in this, but here we only have five men. And this true story you found up in. Norwegian yeah, it's 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 uh, yeah, it's a true story, and and they know all about it up in in Grotli, and it's been Horst uh, Schopis, and uh, and his real name is Dick uh, Richard Partridge. Yeah. Uh, they've both written books about this. You mm. can read about the whole event, and it's it's very matter of fact. There's no no drama in the way they describe. It's very this and that happened, and uh, so it's it's an official story, and we we heard of it, and we thought it was as Peter said, it was a, it's a great setup for a for a movie. And and the, and they met in real life later, and uh, but everything that in real life they spent one day or one night they didn't even spend it together in the cabin, uh, so we forced them together. Bad weather, and we just used the setup and and see what happens if these five men spend some time together, and they do, and a lot of things happen. They get drunk, but <laughs> and stuff. And stuff. And then I think it's time to and have then a they undress and well we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <No. laughs> I think it's time yeah, to go and <laughs> yeah. to have a look at the trailer. Okay. Thank you, Petanes, Lacon Nibor and Steve Henrikov. Thank you.